In the previous video, we've added multi-factor authentication via TOTP to this Rails application. Now, if the user happens to lose access to their TOTP application, or they get locked out of TOTP, they could risk locking themselves out of their account. To help with that, Rodolf provides the recovery codes feature, which allows generating a set of single-use codes for the user, which they can use to authenticate with the second factor instead of TOTP. Let's set this up in our application. We'll start by creating the necessary database table. Then, in our Rodolf configuration, we'll enable the recovery codes feature. This added routes for viewing and adding recovery codes, as well as for authenticating via recovery code. TOTP is still considered the primary multi-factor authentication method, so we'll first need to set it up before we can access recovery codes. When we again visit the page for managing multi-factor authentication methods, we can now see a new link for viewing recovery codes. When we click on the link and confirm our password, we are greeted with a blank page. This is because by default, Rodout doesn't automatically generate any recovery codes. We can create them by submitting this form. Looking at our database, we can see that each recovery code was saved in a separate table row. Let's copy one of these recovery codes and log out and then log back in. In addition to authenticating via TOTP, Rodout now offers us to also authenticate via recovery code. When we enter the recovery code we copied into the clipboard, Rodout confirms we are now successfully multi-factor authenticated. Recovery codes are single-use, so in our Rails logs we'll see that Rodout has deleted the code we've just used for authentication. Great, that works! However, with the current design, recovery codes are not easily discoverable and are optional, which means very few people will set them up. Let's make it so that recovery codes are automatically generated on TOTP setup and are immediately presented to the user. In our Rodout configuration, we'll configure recovery codes to automatically generate whenever another multi-factor authentication method is enabled. When the last multi-factor authentication method has been disabled, we'll delete recovery codes. Next, after TOTP setup, we'll render the generated recovery codes and also ask the user to save them. If we wanted, we could even change how recovery codes are generated, for example, we could use UUIDs. Now, when we disable TOTP, we can see that the recovery codes have been deleted as well. And when we set up TOTP again, we are now shown the generated recovery codes straight away. And there is our flash message. We also see that the recovery codes are now UUIDs. Let's now improve the design of this page. We'll start by importing view templates for recovery codes. In the add recovery codes template, I'll just paste in some ERB code. We'll now be displaying recovery codes in two columns. We've also added a download link. We could have created a backend endpoint for this, but then we'd need to password protect it to maintain the same level of security. Instead, we've embedded the recovery codes in a data URI and couple that with the download attribute. Now when we set up TOTP again, the recovery codes page is looking much nicer. And we can even download them. With relatively few changes, we were able to set up recovery codes as a backup multi-factor authentication method. Rodoth provided a lot of the functionality out of the box. We just tweaked the configuration to make the recovery codes more discoverable. Now users who have multi-factor authentication set up are a lot less likely to lock themselves out of their account. 